tears of sadness flood our streets. When the pain of abandonment cuts so deep. The building blocks of families become dilapidated structures, and the elephants and donkeys forget the key to success often depends on collaboration. I revel in your resilience. Where others with anguish, you flourish. I heard you learn how to rebuild families while your own was on the brink of destruction. When tragedy came lurking, came lurking, you maneuvered through the chaos. With school climate, we have four variables that are just critical. Uh, one of them being relationships, uh, the other being environment, environmental constructs or factors. Then you look at safety and security, and then teaching and learning. If I were to define restorative practices, restorative justice, I would say it's really a way of being. It's a way that we um, communicate with one another. It's a way that we connect with one another. Um, when times are good and when times maybe aren't so good. I think we can look at it as a continuum of working with students using affective statements, just your general relationships, going into circles in the classroom, um, and then moving more into restorative justice when it's a, con a conference to repair a specific harm. We want this to be seen as this is our culture, this is a way of life for us, this is how we operate and do business. When you take away the barriers and you put people into a circle where there's no structural hierarchy, and you take away the desk that's in front, you take away the backpack that's front, you're, you're creating a experience of vulnerability. And then from that place of vulnerability, you're allowing the sharing of deep um, experience. How are you? Not expecting a fine, how are you? But how are you really? I can't hate you. I can't be angry at you, I can't um, judge you if I know you. So the purpose of a restorative circle is to create a community between the students and the teachers as well because as my teacher, Ms. Davenport mentioned, is that sometimes us students, we don't see teachers well as people. We see them as teachers who are there to tell us what to do. And in a circle, we really get to see that our actions also affect the teachers. I introduced the concept of the restorative circles to them as a game to get them familiar with the format of restorative practices and what that would look like. They understood what the rules were, they knew that they had to have the talking point in hand, and being respectful when it was another student's turn to answer the question that was on the table. As a game, they fell in love with it. It was a great way to introduce them to the format of the circles before it became maybe uncomfortable uh, when later we might use it to actually make amends in a situation that was wrong. I think so many of us say and do things that we wish we wouldn't have said. We, we have these huge regrets, but in the moment you don't have them, but later on you do. And so I think it's almost easier to deal restoratively in a situation like that because you can kind of bring those high tensions down a little bit. Everyone can take a step back, take a deep breath and just go, oh, okay. I'm so angry over something that maybe I misinterpreted. I'm so frustrated with you, but oh, that's not what you said, I misheard. I was blessed to have the restorative process take precedent over expelment. What happened during the process we all come in, both sides, the parents, teachers, you know, full circle, kind of a bonding situation. It was nice because you could look across at people and actually talk to them face to face. If the time is taken to get this implemented and becomes cultural, you know, in our school, 
then it's actually less time because I actually took the means to do the referral process for the first time in a long time the other day and it actually took a lot more time than I feel if I were to connect with that student talk about you know the behavior and how it affects me and how it affects other students it nips things in the bud a lot quicker a lot sooner that student feels more safe the student feels more connected you know I think all of our goal is to make students want to be in school keep them here make them feel connected and safe so when we sat down I was really 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 nervous about sitting down and having my students be open and honest because as a teacher, you don't know if they're gonna say, well, I just hate your class, I hate you. And then the questions got a little deeper into what is your role in the classroom? And that's when it got really helpful, is most students took accountability for their role in the classroom and that they weren't doing their work, they were off tasks. And some people got a little emotional about it. So I felt like it was really good for the students that never had a voice to really have a voice, because in a restorative circle, everyone has to speak. So it was really um, eye-opening for me. And to say that, oh, it just changed automatically, no, but there was a different type of vibe going on, and we've done it a few more times, and we, we're getting down to where there's only a couple kids that aren't gelling with the rest of the class. I'll be honest, I was leery going in. I was like, restorative justice, restorative practice? We're doing enough of that now on our own without this. How are we gonna get everybody to buy it? But I went, I sat, I thought, and I knew it was a good direction to try. And what I found early on was success with it. I was so naive thinking that, yay, we're a restorative district, and everyone would be on board. But in actuality, the biggest misconception is that, well, nothing's happening to these kids, um, which could be any further from the truth. Now we're able to bring the two parties together, and even not just as an educator, but as a parent, if there's been an incident, how much peace does that give you when you can bring the two parties together and know that, okay, I've been able to ask some questions and I've been acknowledged and I've been heard and now I can send my child back to campus. Adults are aware and this child has given me their word and we've created an action plan that, you know, is measurable and that there's a due date attached to it and there's accountability. If there was another parent who was going to participate in the process who didn't know anything about it, um, what would you share with them about it? Just go in with an open mind, um, not to prejudge, not to take sides thinking that your child is innocent because there's always two sides to a story. Just accept that kids are going to be kids. They make silly mistakes, but they should be punished for something that is a mistake. The goal of restorative practices is really that every student in the district and every administrator, teacher, parent, community member is welcome at a school campus and when they walk through the doors of their school they're feeling excited to be there, connected and safe in their school community. We can look and say you know what rather than move forward to a hearing how about we work together with the family and if that student is really willing to accept responsibility and is showing some remorse for his or her actions, we bring everyone together to discuss the harm that was caused, the impact that it had, and then how we can restore not only the student who caused the harm, but whoever the victim was, be it a teacher or another student or an entire school community. You recently participated in a restorative conference. Can you share with us a little bit about what that was like for you? I enjoyed it, but it was a little awkward for me to get with the boy that I had an incident with and in his family to know what they went through and what my family went through to talk about what happened and how we could have stopped to prevent that situation for others and also ourselves. I knew that uh, when he was talking that he felt sincere about like his apology and what happened, 
So it was like, it felt good to know that he didn't intend to do it, and his family felt bad that I wasn't at school for all those weeks, so I knew they cared about my education. We want restorative practices to be at the forefront of every officer's mind every time they contact a student on campus. When matters are brought to them involving students, and maybe there's something that the student's done wrong, we're looking for some alternative from a police report going to the court. We're looking for how we might best affect a positive outcome on the campus. But we're not in the business of trying to be punitive or to punish kids. We want to give them tools that will help them beyond high school and just in life in general. Truth be told, you chose to walk.